Let's explore how a magnifying glass, which is nothing but a convex lens, helps us magnify things. So let's explore this by taking an example. Suppose we wanted to examine the details of this letter A. There are two ways to make it look bigger. One, we actually make the letter bigger somehow. Maybe order a jumbo sized version of this page or something like that. But if that's out of the option, we could just go closer to it. Going closer to it makes the letter bigger inside our eyes, as you can see. But there's a problem. Once we go too close, closer than the near point, we can no longer bring the rays of light to focus onto our retina. So right now we are closer than the near point, and although the letter looks big, it's blurry. So, what to do? Well, we can just bring in a convex lens. Because of its converging power, it helps focus the rays back onto our retina, and voila, we can now see it clearly. So the surprising thing is, the magnifying glass doesn't really make things look bigger. See, even without the glass, the size was pretty much the same. All it's doing is making sure that it's in focus. So in short, without the lens, we cannot go too close without blurring it. And this is now the maximum size of the letter in our retina. But with the lens, we can go closer, that makes the image bigger, and the lens helps keep it focused and sharp. So that's the principle of our magnifying glass. So let's look at this in a little bit more detail. Imagine we have our eye and a principal axis drawn. We're going to we're going to consider our eye is just a convex lens and the, this is the retina where the image is supposed to be formed. Now let's put an object. Let's put the same object that we had earlier, the letter A. Let's keep it at some distance from the eye. By the way, this point D is the near point, which means if the object comes closer than the near point, we will not get a sharp image. We'll talk about that. Okay? So anyways, if the object is over here, Let's look at where the image will be formed. We can draw a couple of rays to figure this out. Well, one ray of light will start from the top of this object and will hit it right at the optic center because we know that goes undeviated. Any ray from the optic center goes undeviated. And so this is one ray of light. And another ray we, cannot, we can draw will parallel to the principal axis. Where will this go? Well, this goes straight through the focus. But where is the principal focus of this lens? Well, our eyes are going to adjust its uh, principal focus or its focal length in such a way that these two rays get converged right at the retina. So even without knowing where the principal focus is, we know for sure that this thing has to get focused at this point. And that's the technique that we can use to figure out where the image is inside the eye. But this only works as long as the object is outside the near point. If it goes inside the near point, this won't work. We'll, we'll look at that a little bit later. But anyways, notice this point is being focused over here. Similarly, the point over here would get focused at, at this point. And as a result, we can now reconstruct the image. The image will look inverted, and it looks somewhat like this. So yeah, the image inside our eyes are inverted. Our brains are going to correct it and everything. But that's what it looks like. And now here's the key thing. How big this object, this letter looks to us depends only on the height of the image formed in the retina. If this height were to increase in the retina, well, it look bigger to us. If it were to decrease in the retina, it looks smaller to us. So since we want it to magnify, we want, we want this thing to be magnified, we want it to look bigger to us, we should try and figure out how to make this image, image height in the retina, bigger. And so the big question is, what does the image height depend on. Well, if we ignore this blue ray for a while, we can see what it depends on. So if you just concentrate on this yellow ray, can you see that the height of this image really depends on this angle over here? Let me just write that down. Depends on this angle over here. If this angle were to increase, then the height of the image will increase. And by the way, this angle is the same as this angle. Well, let's call this angle as theta. So if this theta increases, this angle increases, and this image size increases. So to increase the image size inside our retina, we have to somehow increase this angle theta. So let's see what this angle theta depends on. Can we calculate that from this figure over here? Well, well sure we can. If we call the object height as, say, h, let's say this object height is h, and let's assume this distance to be d, I'll not write that down, but let's assume this distance is d, then we can, if the angle, for small angles, we can, we can use small angle approximation, we can treat this like an arc. Can you see that? We can treat this as the radius and the arc. And so we can use the arc formula, and if we do that, 
the arc formula tells us that this angle theta in radians is going to be the arc length, which is h, divided by the distance over here, or the radius, d. And by the way, this is not exactly equal to, it's an approximation, because in reality, this is not an exact arc, it's actually a right angle triangle. You can also think of it this way. If you take tan theta, you get h divided by d, but if theta is very small, tan theta is pretty much equal to theta, and that's also how we can justify this approximation. But anyways, if you want to increase this angle theta, we can either increase the height of the object, we can make the object bigger, so it'll look bigger to us, or we can decrease the value of d, this distance we can decrease it. In other words, we can bring, bring that object closer to our eye. That's what we did. If we decrease it, then also theta will increase and that's why the image size will increase. So let's just go ahead and decrease that. Let's bring the object closer. Let's bring it all the way to the D point over here. And now you can see that the object starts subtending a bigger angle near our eye. Can you see this angle has increased? This theta has increased. And as a result, let me write that, that theta down over here. And as a result, this angle has increased. This angle increases. And therefore, this image also increases in size. Look at this image. That image looks bigger to us. Well, that's exactly what we saw, right? As we went closer and closer, that image started looking bigger and bigger to us. But another thing that happens to us is that as this object comes closer, our eyes get more and more stressed. To understand why, let's bring back that blue ray, the ray parallel to the principal axis. And if we just focus on these incoming rays as for now, when the object was far behind, they weren't very diverging. The angle of divergence was small, and as a result, our eyes could easily focus that. But as the object comes closer and closer and closer and comes right to the D point, notice what hap happens to the angle of divergence. These rays become more divergent. The angle of divergence increases, and as a result, our eyes have to work harder to now again focus them right on the retina. And so although coming closer to the object increases the image size, it also ends up stressing your eye. And therefore, if you were to bring this object even closer, trying to make this angle even bigger, let me just draw that over here, no doubt this angle would increase even further, giving you a bigger image. But now, the rays are so divergent, your eyes will not be able to focus it right at this point. The two rays will not meet it. Your eyes won't be able to do that. It ran out of power, per se. And as a result, the rays will not meet over here. They might meet behind the retina or whatever. But anyways, the point will not be focused. And as a result, even though you get a big image, you end up getting a blurry image. Again, that's what we saw. The moment you go closer than the, the D point, the near point, the image becomes bigger in size, but it becomes blurry. And therefore, with our naked eye, this is the limit. This is the maximum angle. So we can write that down. So let's write that down over here. The maximum angle, we'll call it as theta naught. That's the maximum angle that the object can subtend to our naked eye without blurring it. Without blurring it, well that would be in this, in this case, and that would be the height of the object divided by this distance. That's the, that's the near point distance. Let's call it as capital D itself. And so this is that maximum angle, this angle. So let's call it theta naught. This is that maximum angle or this angle, which corresponds to the maximum size. You cannot get any bigger angle for a naked eye and still get a sharp image. So if you want to make that angle even bigger, then you need some help over here to converge that beam of light. And we get that help from the magnifying glass. So a magnifying glass, as shown before, is just a convex lens. And let's say that we bring our object exactly at the principal focus of this convex lens. What's going to happen? Well, we're dealing with very thin lenses over here. They're not as thick as what I've shown in the picture over here, that's exaggerated. But because of these thin lenses, we can pretty much assume that the optic center of this lens is at the same location as the optic center of this lens. And if you do that assumption, then this ray that was passing through the optic center will pretty much remains the same. And as a result, well, the angle subtended by the object still remains the same at the eye. So the size of the object, size of the image in the retina won't change at all. It's pretty much the same as we had even without the lens. But now the lens will help converge the beam of light. So when this, this ray of light, that will change. Let's draw that. So this ray will now change a little bit because of the lens. 
as it goes through the lens, the lens will converge this, and guess what? Since the object is right at the principal focus, after refraction, the rays of light are going to become parallel to each other. And so as a result, after refraction, this ray is gonna become parallel, oops, it's gonna become parallel like this, oops, okay, fine, it's gonna become parallel like this, and so notice the incoming rays for our eyes are parallel rays. And guess what? Our eyes can easily converge these parallel rays of light because remember, parallel rays come from objects which are very far away. And when you look at things very far away, you can easily converge them. That's the easiest one to converge. And so our eyes now can converge this beam of light with ease at this point. And because it now is able to converge the beam of light, this thing will now become very sharp. So look at this this will now become very sharp. And again, that's exactly what we saw earlier. When we introduced the lens, that image did not change in size, but it became sharp. So now what is this new angle going to be? Well, that's bigger than theta naught. And let's call it as theta dash. And that theta dash is going to be approximately, well, we can use the same formula. Uh, this also should be approximate, okay? So this is approximately, all right, okay? Well, this time it's going to be height, the same thing, height, divided by, what's the distance? Well, that's the focal length, right? Because this, the, these lenses are pretty thin, so we can imagine, we can pretty much neglect the thickness. So the distance is pretty much the focal length over here. And so that is F. And so now we can go ahead and define this thing called as magnification that this lens is producing. So if this height due to this lens, introduction of the lens, say is two times more than this, then we can say the magnification is two. So magnification over here is going to be the height of the image in the retina with the lens to the height, maximum height, without the lens. But guess what? The ratio of these heights is the same as the ratio of these angles, right? Because if this height were to double, that means this angle also pretty much, pretty much doubled. And therefore, when it comes to a simple microscope or a magnifying glass, we define magnification, magnification as the height of the image in over here divided by the height of this image. But that's the same, pretty much the same as the angle subtended over here divided by the angle over here. And that turns out to be h by f divided by h by d. So that's h divided by f divided by h by d, h divided by capital D, and that is approximately equal to this cancels, you get d divided by f. I know it's a little bit crowded, but this is now the magnification of our simple microscope. Well, let's end this with a couple of details. Well, this formula that we derived only works when the object is kept right at the principal focus because only then we can do this. And you may have some questions like, what happens if the object is kept somewhere here? Or what if we bring the object inside? Will it still magnify? What will happen? We'll talk more about them in future videos. And the second thing is because the rays of light are parallel after refraction, they're parallel when they come and hit your eyes, your eyes are in their most relaxed state. So this formula, when you're using this magnification, this, this setup, your eyes are relaxed. So eyes, are relaxed. So if you're reading some literature using a magnifying glass, this is the setup that you should do. And one last thing that surprised me was whenever I was using a magnifying glass, I used to use it like this. I used to keep the glass far away from my eyes and closer to the object. Well, guess what? You shouldn't do that. Because if you do that, then your eyes are far away from the object and the angle subtended will still be pretty small. But, but in order to use the magnifying glass properly, you should keep the glass very close to your eyes. That's when, when you, that's when you can really get close to the object, increasing that angle, uh, increasing the angle subtended. And that's why you might, you may have seen in movies, detectives when they're using a magnifying glass, that's really how they use it. You have to keep it close to your eyes and then clo closer to the object.